Hi and welcome to the IB Economist's YouTube channel. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to draw short-run cost curves. This lesson is not meant to explain the nature of the short-run cost curves. For that there will be a separate lesson. Instead we are going to aim at a more practical approach on how to draw accurately short-run cost curves without taking too much of your time. Usually on the IB exams, students don't have too much time to draw diagrams. As a result, they need to be able to draw them quickly without having to think too much about them. With a bit of practice, you will be able to draw correctly short round cost curves. The first thing when drawing short round cost curves would be to draw the marginal cost. This is usually the point where you should start because all other cost curves are related to the marginal cost. The marginal cost curve looks like a U-shaped curve and looks like this. You should practice drawing marginal costs first. Start by just drawing them. It should go down and then increase. The marginal cost decreases initially due to increase in efficiency and then rises with every next unit of output. Let's observe one more time how you should draw the marginal cost curves. Once you have the marginal cost curve, then you can go and proceed to draw the other cost curves. The next one which you should draw would be the average total cost curve. The average total cost curve looks also U-shaped. What's important when drawing it is to make the minimum of the average total cost curve the point where the ATC curve intersects with the marginal cost curve. Once you have the marginal cost and the average total cost, you can then proceed and draw the average variable cost. The average variable cost looks very similar to the average total cost However, there are few important exceptions. Just like the average total cost, the average variable cost has its minimum at the point when it would intersect with the marginal cost. However, notice that the spread between the average total cost and the average variable cost is larger at low levels of output and gets progressively smaller at high levels of output. The reason for that lies in the fact that as output increases the average total cost and the average variable cost are going to converge. The two of them would never intersect but the average variable cost will get very close to the average total cost and the explanation for that lies within the average fixed cost. Once we have the average total cost and the average variable cost, we can then proceed and add the average fixed cost. Now, generally speaking, we would not draw the average fixed cost in our cost diagrams unless the problem specifically asks for it. There are two reasons for that. The first one is that the diagram already illustrates us the level of the average fixed cost. The second reason for that is because the average fixed cost usually makes the diagram look more complicated than it already is. It will present too much information and there will be too many curves on it and the whole thing might start to look a bit messy. The average fixed cost looks like this. It's a continuously falling curve. Notice that as output increases the average fixed cost is going to decrease but it will never become equal to zero. It will be converging with the horizontal axis but never intersected. Now there is a reason for that. Remember that the average fixed cost plus the average variable cost is equal to the average total cost. And remember that I already told you that this information was presented on the diagram. If you can look carefully, you can see that the distance between the ATC and ABC is equivalent to the distance between the horizontal axis and AFC. This completes the overall picture on how the short run cost curve would look like. You should practice drawing them. It should come easy and natural to you. 
Remember, always follow the order that I just showed you. Start with the marginal cost, then add the average total cost, then if needed add the average variable cost, and if needed add the average fixed cost. Of course, most of the times you would want to draw the cost curves together with a demand curve and a marginal revenue curve. In this example, we have a downward sloping demand curve, which is also equal to our average revenue, and a steeper marginal revenue curve. So if we want to add the cost curves to this picture, we would do it in the same order that we have been doing it. First, we will start by drawing the marginal cost curve. Once we have the marginal cost curve, we can actually find the point of intersection between marginal cost and marginal revenue and find the price and quantity when this firm is going to maximize profit. Next, if we want to have the average total cost, we can add it. Again, remember, the average total cost first falls decreases at a slower rate and then increases more sharply and it is very important that the minimum of the ATC curve would be the point of intersection between ATC and MC. Next we can add if needed the average variable cost. Again remember that the minimum of the average variable cost should be at the point of the intersection between AVC and MC. Also make sure that at higher levels of output the average variable cost would converge with the average total cost. Make the difference between the two curves, the ATC and the AVC, larger at lower levels of output. In the following example, we are going to look at the situation when the firm faces a perfectly elastic demand curve. This is a situation that can happen in a perfect competition. We can see that in this case the demand curve is equal to the average revenue and also equal to the marginal revenue and they're all defined by the price which is given to us by the market. The price in this case is P1. Again, if we want to draw the different cost curves, we would start first by drawing the marginal cost. As usual, it initially decreases and then due to diminishing returns, the marginal cost rises. Then we can add the average total cost. And as usual, the average total cost has its minimum at the point of intersection with the marginal cost. Then again, if needed, we can add the average variable cost. Make sure that the average variable cost has its minimum at the point of intersection with the marginal cost. Also, try to make the average variable cost to converge with the average total cost at higher levels of output. One of the most effective ways to learn how to draw the shorthand cost curves is to practice drawing them. What I advise my students to do is to take an A4 sheet of paper and to simply draw 12 diagrams on it with short run cost curves. Here is an example of short run cost curves that I have drawn myself. As you can see on this sheet of paper I have 12 cost curves and they are all different they vary in in the shape and in some of these situations the firm would be making abnormal profit in another of these situations the firm would be making a loss in some it might be breaking even what is important is that you train yourself to do it quickly and naturally you shouldn't think too much how the cost curves look like instead you should just draw them out of your memory. Your hand should be used to drawing them. So when you decide that you want to draw a marginal cost, it should just come naturally to you. You shouldn't think too much on about how the marginal cost should look like. And really the best way to do it is by just taking an A4 sheet of paper and just doing 10, 15 different diagrams on it so that the whole hand movement and motion comes very natural to you. 
as usual, try to make the difference between the ATC and AVC larger at lower levels of output and smaller at higher levels of output. This would be fine for paper 1 and paper 2s. If you have a paper 3 exam question which asks you to draw it, chances are that that question is going to provide the specific levels of the marginal cost and the average total cost and the average variable cost. So you're actually going to plot the cost curves uh, by using a given set of data. But for the first two papers, being able to sketch these would be fine and might prove very helpful to you if you have a question and you quickly want to draw a diagram on your sketch paper just to see how it's going to look like and then you can use that diagram in order to write your answers. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and as usual you're more than welcome to come back to the IB Economist YouTube channel for more tutorials in the future.